Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So I just had an amazing God moment with my son, Ethan, my youngest, my eight-year-old. We had a really rough morning. Um, you know, I was up at like three something because um, my husband had to get up early. And so I got up with him to pack him his lunch. And so then I listened to some devotional on YouTube and laid down for a little while and got up to get my young son ready for school, packed his lunch and making sure he's, um, you know, got all of his stuff, his PE clothes, his soccer stuff, um, book bags, um, food, water and all of that. So trying to get out the door and of course it was one of those mornings where, you know, I tell him to get inside the car, take his things, put it in the car because um, I didn't want us to be late. We've already been late one time. We were like one minute late. And um, so that goes against his record. So, and I was, need, needless to say, I was stressed. It's supposed to be my day off and I've got things that I had planned to do, you know, grocery shopping, wash clothes and kitchen duties and prep and cook some fresh meals for us. Uh, and I'm, I'm tired. And um, so he was not wanting to do what I asked him to do, which is get his stuff, get in the car. And he didn't want me to pack him a sandwich. He just wanted to eat snacks for lunch. I'm like, no. So we had that conversation. Um, so I packed his PE bag with everything he needed, his PE clothes and soccer stuff. And he decided he just wanted one item out of there. And um, so all of that happened within, you know, less than five minutes. And I just lost it and I yelled at him I was like you're stressing me out you know why can't you just go in a car take your stuff and get in a car and do what I asked you to do why do you make this hard on me so I was really upset I was and he was upset because you know he's very tender-hearted he's my baby and we're very close very close and um so that's how we left the home and I was heartbroken. I do not get away with anything. The Lord does not let me get away with anything. And so we're riding, you know, to school. He was very early, 10 minutes early. And, um, but I was not in a, in good spirit. And I was, you know, I was so condemned. I felt so horrible. And, um, on top of that, you know, work was looming on me. I was under so much pressure. It's supposed to be my day off, but I'm working with an out-of-state client that was ready, you know, to buy. So I knew that I had work to do at home with that and then go into the office for a couple of hours to work on that. So I was just so stressed. And then when I got home, you know, um, the Lord was just convicting me. I was broken. I was broken and I just got on my knees and I just cried out to the Lord, like, Father, please forgive me. Just help me, heal me, heal my son. Don't let my words break his heart, God. Heal him, heal his soul. Forgive me, God. Cleanse me. Deliver me from, from this ugliness. So I was just broken and I, I cried and, and it bothered me greatly. It's just this heaviness looming over me. It's like the guilt, you know the condemnation and I was you know asking the Lord help me to accept your forgiveness help me to forgive myself to forgive myself because I never be I never want you know to hurt my precious children like that there and um so that was half of my day just dealing and struggling with that and with the deal um, at work and I went in for a little while and that's on hold that didn't go anywhere clients need some more time to think about it all the money that um, they're not ready to part with yet but um, you know um, so then when I went to his school to pick up Ethan after school he had a great day they went on a field trip um, governor's mansion and then after that he had soccer and then he played four squares his favorite games um, he loves it he, you know he was in high spirited but I would not let it go 
So when we were driving home, I said to him, I said, son, I cried after I left, uh, after I dropped you off. He's like, why, mommy? He said, because it broke my heart that I yelled at you. I am so, so sorry, which I already ap apologized on the way to school this morning. But um, that was before I cried out to God. Um, and um, so he's like, it's okay, mom. You don't need to be sorry. I'm like, what do you mean, son? It's like, no one is perfect, mom. And besides, I was being rude. And um, he said, I love you, mom. He said, thank you for all that you do for me. This is what he said to me. Thank you, mom, for taking me to the treat and tell thing at church last night, even though you were tired. Thank you for the food that you provide for me. He's like, thank you all that you do for me. I love you, mom. And I just like, I couldn't believe my ears. I was like, I was like, I love you so much. He's like, I'm like, I want you to know you're my heart. I never want to hurt you. He's like, I know, mom. And just the whole ride home, he was so sweet. He's, he's a sweet kid anyways, but he was extremely overflowing with gratitude, kindness, and, and thankfulness. And, um, you know, and then when we got home, and <laughs> he was just so happy, and as he was getting his book bag and going into the house, he turned around to look at me while I'm still in the car. And he says, I love you, mom. And um, I just, like, I love you too. And we just hugged each other for a long, long, long time. And then, you know, the dog walks in and, and he's like, go away, Blue. This is our private moment. <laughs> so, and I told him, you know, how much I loved him and how much I appreciated him. And I said, make sure you love on daddy when he gets home because he needs to see and hear um, that you love him and appreciate him as well, okay? So, you know, everything's fine. My heart feels better. It was the healing, the relief that I needed. And um, in the Lord, it was a God moment. I saw his imprint, I saw his spirit, I saw his love, I saw his grace all over that. So I was like, I wonder what today's word from our devotional will be. So I came into my office and looked up October 30th, which is today's date, and it's on merciful. So I wanted to bring this word to us um, in hope that it will encourage us and just keep our hearts, our thoughts in alignment with the Word, the heart of God, the Spirit of God, even though we miss it, you know, and we blow it. But if we're merciful and we're transparent and um, we ask for forgiveness, God will show us mercy and others will see and they will give us mercy as we also are humble and are honest with our own um, shortcomings and and um, brokenness and transparency mercy will be given back to us amen so let me just bring the words to us blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy and that's matthew 5 7 in the sermon on the mount Jesus promises that the people who are merciful to others will themselves receive mercy. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you will find yourselves cared for, says the message. 
In Luke's account of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus requests, Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Luke 6.36, this is what broke me this morning. This is what drove me to my knees and cried out to the Lord. Because God, my Father, my Savior, has been so, so merciful, kind, compassionate, forgiving, gentle towards me. And when I yelled at my son, I knew that I was not modeling the example that I know of Father God that he has shown to me. I knew that I failed in representing my father to my son, our father, our father whose art in heaven, amen, who will hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And his will is not for us to yell at our children like I did this morning. So that's, this is what broke my heart because I knew that I could not receive the mercies that God has given me and not able to extend it to my sons or anyone else for that matter. To be merciful means to have an open heart and an open hand to other people. God asks you and me to be merciful just as He is merciful. He asks that we be willing to help other people just as He is always prepared to help us. The compassion of God for the world does not stand apart from the compassionate actions of His children. The love of God is given visible hands. When His children live like His children by protecting orphans, welcoming strangers into their homes and helping the poor in need. Do you hear him giggling? He's a very happy child. If you are prepared to pass the compassion that God has shown to you on to other people, I did not pass that test today, there is a beautiful promise that you can take to your account. If you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. He definitely strengthened my frame. I was weak this morning. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Isaiah 58, 10, 11. Father, I pray that you will give me a heart for those in need and hands that will offer them help so that I will be merciful as you are merciful. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful devotional? So I pray that this word will draw us, inspire us, compel us to be more merciful, to be kind, gentle, patient, and um, (laughs) self-control. So thank you for listening. Thank you for not judging. And um, I pray the love and the peace of God permeates your heart. God bless you guys. I love you guys.